Hey everyone, this is Nancy from New Travel Escapes, and with Toronto Pearson Airport recently ranking as the worst in the world for delays, we thought we would give you some tips and tricks to navigating the Toronto Airport to help you get through the lines faster and be at your gate with the Timmies in hand a little bit sooner. Stay tuned while we give you 10 tips that might make your experience getting to your gate a little less painful. Our first airport tip is fairly simple. Know which terminal that you'll be departing from. There are two terminals at Pearson Airport, Terminal 1 and Terminal 3. There used to be a Terminal 2, but that's not relevant for this video. Be sure you get dropped off at the correct terminal for your departing flight. Terminal 1 is almost 90% Air Canada flights with a few others thrown into the mix, including Emirates. Terminal 3 is about 50% WestJet, with Air Transat, Sunwing, and a few others making up the remaining 50%. If, by some reason, you get dropped off at the wrong terminal, never fear, there is a free Terminal Link train that runs between each terminal. Our second airport tip is to never underestimate how busy the 401 highway is getting to and from the airport. We live about 20 minutes away from Toronto Airport without traffic. So that means it could take us a half an hour to get to the airport if it's in the middle of the night or the wee hours of the morning, or it can take us two hours or longer to get through the oppressive, gut-wrenching, soul-destroying traffic that is the 401. Tip number three is to check in online at home before your flight. Do yourself a favor and get yourself checked in, pick your seats if you haven't done so already, and print your boarding pass at home. This will save you standing in at least one long line when you arrive at the airport. Team member Steve always checks in 24 hours before his scheduled departure. He prints off a boarding pass and has a backup screenshot of his boarding pass on his phone, just in case. If you're checking a bag, you can then proceed directly to a kiosk at the airport. You can choose any kiosk, and there are a lot of them now, so just touch on your airline and input your information and the kiosk will print bag tags for your luggage and another boarding pass if you want one. If you're flying carry-on only, then you can take your boarding pass that you printed at home and your carry-on luggage and proceed directly to the TSA line, bypassing everything else. You will need to show an actual real-life airline employee your passport to confirm that it is in fact you flying, but it is much easier to do that while you're at waiting at your gate than waiting in line when you arrive at the airport. We are showing you footage from Terminal 1, but almost all of this information applies to Terminal 2 departures as well. Tip number four is to look at the reader board. If you are confused about where to check in and where to go, just look at the huge blue reader board in the departures area. These boards not only show you whether or not your flight is on time or delayed, but they show you what gate you are departing from, as well as the aisle number for where you should be checking in, and it has an arrow pointing in the direction you want to go. This should eliminate a lot of wandering aimlessly back and forth trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. It took me 10 years to notice that arrow that I should have been paying closer attention to. And if you've missed it too, now you know. Maybe you should hit that subscribe button to thank me. It costs you nothing and it helps me keep making informational videos. Tip number five is if you have priority check-in, then you can go directly to the business class check-in area at the end of the departures in aisle one. or. There is also a priority check-in desk in almost every aisle. Priority check-in is given to those who are flying Air Canada Signature Class or Premium Economy or even those who have that as a perk on their credit card. Yep, even if you're flying in Economy, if your credit card has priority as a perk, then you can use that priority check-in area. Tip number six is about the family check-in counters. If you're traveling with a child under the age of six and on Air Canada, then you can go straight to the family check-in counter where the lines are shorter and you can have an extra helping hand getting you and your little ones checked in for your flight. Air Transat in Terminal 3 also has dedicated family check-in counters. Tip number seven is to let you know that if you have unaccompanied minors or not so tech savvy family members, then you can accompany them into the airport, help them with the kiosks, and get their bags dropped into the appropriate bag drop area. You have to leave them at the TSA line, but up until that point, 
you can lend them a hand so they don't need to arrive and stand in a ridiculously long lineup just to have a gate agent do for them what you could do for them. This leads us to tip number eight. Get ready for the TSA line by being prepared in advance in how you pack your carry-on bag. Liquids have to be kept in a one liter plastic transparent bag and it must be able to close. You can have no liquids or gels above 100 milliliters or 3.4 ounces. The container the liquid is kept in must also not exceed this size. You may be surprised at what constitutes a liquid or gel, so if you are in doubt, then there is a great Ask TSA page on Facebook and on Twitter, so you can check with them. If they tell you it's allowed and it's something really bizarre, then I personally would snap a screenshot of their answer in case you need to show it that you have checked in advance about something obscure. There are also exceptions for hand sanitizer and baby formula or breast milk, so check with your airline or on Ask TSA about how to transport those in your carry-on. Along with your liquids bag, pack anything with a keyboard at the top of your carry-on luggage because it's going to have to come out and go in one of those swanky grey bins. Don't be that person who has to take half their clothes out to access their laptop. You're just holding everybody up. Along the same line is to listen to what the TSA agents are saying to the people in front of you. If they're telling them to take out their liquids bag, then you know it applies to you as well. No need to make them say it again. Tip number nine is to always keep your passport in your hand while going through TSA. I have seen many people over the years toss their passport into that gray bin and then proceed through the security screening only to forget their passport in the bin. There's a lot going on in that area with packing and unpacking, liquids and questions, shoes on and shoes off. Just do yourself a favor and keep your passport in your hand while you go through that red light, green light body scanner thingy. As my father-in-law always says, you can forget to pack almost anything and be okay, but not your passport or your credit card. Tip number 10 is about what happens if there is something in your carry-on bag that they tell you should have been in your check bag and it is not allowed on the plane. At Terminal 1, they used to have a service where you can pay to store the item that they won't let through and pick it back up upon your return. I think this service is still there and if it happens to you and you can't take it with you but you're not willing to throw it away, you should ask about storing it until you're back. It will cost you, but it might be worth it. A bonus tip for this video is to make sure that your flight is registered to your cell number and enable your push notifications. That way you will get push notification alerts about when to check in online for your flight, whether there have been any time changes or gate changes. It will also alert you to when they are starting to board the plane. Don't rely on this exclusively, I would still highly suggest you set a backup alarm for your boarding time, but the push notifications are really handy when they're working correctly. When you're all checked in, bags dropped through TSA, you find your gate location so you know where it is, then you head to a lounge, a restaurant, or a coffee shop and enjoy the wait with a beverage rather than still standing in one of those long crazy lines. We hope this is helpful and that these tips can get you to your gate having stood in as few lines as possible. Check out our videos on some of the airport lounges and see if they are worth paying for or if you're going to hit the nearest Tim Hortons for coffee and a donut. If you're not Canadian, then finding a Tim Hortons in the airport is a must-do to experience true Canadian culture. Please like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram and TikTok and we will be back really soon with more travel content. Bye everyone!